More juice for the gyro. What? However you say it, gyros are delicious. However, here are 10 secrets you need to know before eating another gyro. How to pronounce the name gyro. Joe, it's pronounced gyro. Yeah, but in New York, we call them gyro. Let's put a stop to this discussion. Fortunately, it's a little less complicated than pronouncing gif. If you're talking about a gyro compass or gyroscope, you pronounce it gyro, as you'd expect. However, pronounce it like this, gyro or gyro, when ordering a gyro for lunch. The first is a little easier to express. If you need a catchy tune to remember it the next time the waitress asks what you want to eat, think of Jimmy Fallon and Luke Bryant's I Don't Know How to Pronounce Gyro song. No more Firo, you're a hero, cause now I know it's gyro. In the 1970s, the term for this traditional sandwich was taken from modern Greek. Many English speakers have added their own variation to the pronunciation, but you'll want to know how to say gyro correctly if you ever visit Greece. It has an interesting history. What a civilization is the Greeks. Euro is pronounced euro and is derived from the ancient Greek word eurizo, which means to turn. It's a piled, rotating mound of thinly sliced meat, usually lamb, hog, beef, or a mix of the three, with modern variations, including chicken and even fish. The layers meld together as the tightly packed stack roasts upright. The grill person manning the euro rotisserie cuts paper-thin slices, which are then fixed in a pita wrap with tomatoes, raw red onions, lettuce or parsley, tzatziki, and occasionally fries and a dusting of paprika or cayenne pepper. Gyro is the poster child for Greek fast food, despite the fact that it may or may not be 100% Greek. The gyro as we know it today first appeared in Greece in 1922, brought over by Greek and Armenian refugees fleeing conflicts in Asia Minor. The majority came from Smyrna and Istanbul. According to lore, Armenians were the finest Euro masters. As they settled in their new country, many refugees became merchants. They started modest businesses, such as the Euro stands on every street corner. Following the migration patterns of Greeks themselves, Euro shops began to spring up all throughout Europe, the United States, and Australia after World War II. There are different types of Euros. I'll take one euro, please. You got it, buddy. Gyros are a traditional Greek food made from meat that has been rolled around a giant skewer. They are frequently served on pita bread with a variety of ingredients, such as tzatziki sauce. There are a variety of different types of gyros, such as the classic ground beef, pork, and lamb gyro, which are all delicious and can be served as a main dish or as an appetizer. They can also be served in a pita bread or other wrap, making them a convenient food option for a variety of occasions. The gyro is an iconic street food in many parts of the world, but most of them are served in a pita with lamb, beef, or chicken. The vegetarian version, on the other hand, is a whole different animal. It's a pile of fluffy pita bread, vegetables, and tzatziki sauce wrapped around a gyro meat substitute and grilled. This dish has grown in popularity to the point that it is now considered one of the world's foremost vegetarian fast meals. A short search for recipes can provide you with suggestions on how other people prepare it. In America, beef and lamb meat are substituted for pig and chicken, and fries are occasionally included. Americans eat 300,000 euros a day. One bite. American gyros are one of the most common food items sold at fast food restaurants in the United States. They're a fast food favorite among many Americans and have become a significant source of protein for many hungry diners. There are many varieties of gyros, and they're even available in a variety of fast food chains, including KFC, Jack in the Box, and McDonald's. They're a terrific option for dining on the run. While the gyro is a globally recognized meal with a long history, it's only in America that the sandwich is as popular as it is. There's little doubt that the United States has a tremendous thirst for euros, as seen by the number of lunch carts, restaurants, and fast food behemoths offering the dish. When it comes to fast food, statistics show that Arby's sells 27 million euros every year when the various alternatives on the menu are combined. Arby's Euro meat is acquired directly from spit roast rotisseries, which aids Euro manufacturers like Kronos Inc., who stated that the company's euros were consumed in every 
excess of 100 million times each year in the United States. That's a substantial amount of beef. The Euro has become so popular that September 1st is designated as National Euro Day. They are different from shawarma. You ever tried shawarma? The gyro, as a descendant of the donor kebab, takes on the flavor of spit-roasted cookery. But it's not the only cuisine with this heritage. Donor has given a name to a cuisine that arose in the region between Europe and Asia. Shawarma is a fantastic example. While the Middle Eastern dish and the gyro are linked, there are considerable differences between them. Both sandwiches are distinguished by skewered and seasoned beef chunks that are grilled and cut in unique ways. However, their meat comes from from a variety of sources. Euros are usually made of pork in Greece, while lamb and beef are used in America. Meanwhile, due to religious dietary constraints, Middle Eastern shawarma consists of chicken, beef, and even fish, but never pig. Both sandwiches are served on pita bread with a variety of toppings, but they aren't the same. Shawarma is also seasoned with local spices like sumac and za'atar. While many shawarma cooks utilize a standing rotisserie, the meal can can also be grilled horizontally, and is frequently done so. Horizontal cooking is sometimes utilized in Greek-American restaurants and certain fast food establishments, but a real gyro is finely cut directly off the vertical cone. Despite its resemblance to cuisines such as shawarma, the gyro has its own individuality. The modest Ottoman doner kebab has influenced cuisines such as shawarma, gyro, and even tacos al pastor, yet each has parallels and distinctions distinctions with its culinary ancestors. World Wars Helped the Spread of Euros We shall never surrender! <laughs> The world wars are generally associated with sacrifice and rationing when it comes to food. Apart from the shortage of particular products and meals, war years are also a time when people migrate for food. One of the few things individuals could take with them when they fled war-torn nations in Europe, Asia, and Africa was their knowledge of cuisine cultures. During World War I and World War II, these migrants carried the seeds of the first Euro with them. Between 1919 and 1922, Greece and Turkey were at odds following the conclusion of World War I. According to experts, the Greco-Turkish War resulted in a forced population exchange with the two countries. Turkish Muslims were pushed out of Greece, and Greek Christians were pushed out of Turkey. Immigrant Greeks interacted with Eastern European, Armenian, and Turkish groups, migrating across the continent and taking the form of doner kebabs with them as a result of the Asia Minor catastrophe. Greeks began to flee Europe a decade after World War II in order to avoid the economic hardships of the post-war years. The Euro accompanied them once more. Certain limitations on Greek immigrants were lifted in 1965, resulting in an increase in the Greek-American population. Cities including Chicago and New York saw a particularly high increase. America was in the middle of a fast food boom at the moment, and the Euro would fit right in. Euros entered America through Chicago and New York. I love New York! Food that is widely available and cheap is woven into the fabric of dining in these two cities, which are both critical components in the melting pot that is American dining. A quick foods revolution swept the United States in the 1970s. According to food historians, street sellers in New York were experimenting with new tastes and curbside techniques, including employing upright gyro rotisseries to conserve space in their food carts, just like generations before them had done. The simple sandwich provided something fresh, hot, and affordable. Meanwhile, in Chicago, a full-fledged Euro business was forming. In great numbers, Greek immigrants flocked to the Midwest's food sector, building welcoming eateries for their fellow residents. Many of them sold American cuisine in their businesses and ate Greek meals at home. That is, until a guy called George Apostolo claims to have sold the first Euros in America at his Parkview restaurant in 
Chicago in 1965. Industry-minded Chicagoans were already contemplating ways to mass manufacture the meat stacks for a ravenous market. Meanwhile, New Yorkers were slinging street-side gyros at Olympic speeds. The gyro is a meal that has a long history of popping up in unexpected locations, so its appearance in Chicago and New York is part of the plan. Since the 1970s, the American desire for gyros has expanded, overtaking mom-and-pop production in favor of a more Americanized industrial model. Souvlaki and gyros have a lot in common. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. I make lamb. Another traditional Greek meal is souvlaki. It's a meal that's similar to a gyro and is frequently offered at areas where the sandwich is sold. Unfortunately, souvlaki, like gyros, has its fair share of misidentifications. This distinctively Greek delicacy is sometimes misidentified as a kebab. Souvlaki is comparable to a kebab in that it's skewered and cooked horizontally, but the meat in souvlaki is usually pig, whereas conventional kebabs aren't. Souvlaki and gyros have comparable marinades, seasonings, and flavors, but because the pita-wrapped sandwich's distinguishing feature is upright grilling, you might ask how the two are linked. It's a famous debate. Did the gyro or the souvlaki come first? The contemporary gyro first gained popularity in Greece in the 1920s, then in the United States in the 1970s. Ancient Greeks, like Aristotle, were eating souvlaki for centuries until the first rotisseries began serving gyro meat. Then came World War II, which basically eliminated the supply of the meat pieces required for souvlaki, but the leftovers required for gyro remain. For decades, the two meals traded positions in terms of popularity. The need for gyros in America eventually morphed into a desire for other new Greek dishes. Souvlaki's revival was aided by this. Both can now be found as part of a whole Greek dinner. The way of cooking is very important. It is a passionate affair. It is completely feasible to produce something that tastes like a gyro at home with the appropriate seasoning, spicing, and marinating recipes. Buy good meat, cook it in a cast iron skillet or on the grill, make a delicious tzatziki, then load your pita. If you've ever had the opportunity to eat gyro meat straight off the spit, you'll be able to sense the difference in texture. If you want to consume a real gyro sandwich with crispy edges and juicy ingredients, you should understand how how important the upright rotisserie is. Why is this? Throughout the cooking process, the vertical stack of beef bastes each lower layer with the fat and juice from the strip above, thanks to gravity. This procedure creates the crusty edges that define the texture of gyro meat. It's also responsible for keeping the interior layers moist and delicious. In order to get the greatest results, the upright rotisserie is fired with coal rather than convection heaters. Once again, great tasting gyros may be made at home. However, if texture and authenticity are important to you, you should go to your local gyro specialist. Greek people eat gyros differently. Rodney, Harry, who's up? Despite the fact that Americans consume a staggering amount of gyros each year, the cuisine remains the property of the native and immigrant Greeks who first shared it with the globe. This claim comes with certain perks, such as the ability to customize the gyro with a choice of toppings and full-on ingredient combinations. In America, the traditional gyro is prepared as follows. Thinly sliced lamb, beef, or both are stuffed into toasted pita bread. The lettuce, tomato, red onions, and of course, tzatziki sauce are then added. The acidic toppings complement the meat spices, and the whole dish leaves you with a flavorful Mediterranean bite. <laughs> However, this isn't the universal standard across the seas. For starters, lamb gyros are uncommon in Greece. The majority of the country's gyros are made with pork. The sandwich is also garnished differently by local Greeks. Ketchup and mustard are regularly substituted for tzatziki in the north of the country. Furthermore, Greeks frequently load pitas with french fries to create an all-in-one meal. Just when you thought eating a gyro couldn't get much easier, Easier, Greek chefs come up with a new way to do it. Looking for more awesome videos? Well, we've got them, so stay right here and check out another one.